morning, everybody. Let's stand and join together in singing forever.
Good morning, and we are glad to have you today and welcome you to church here on this Back to Church Sunday at Grace Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are here worshiping with us. If you are worshiping with us in person, we want to know who you are, and we would like to invite you to complete the tear-off section of your bulletin and place it in the offering plate when it comes by a little bit later in the service. And it has an opportunity for us to know more about you as if you have something specific you'd like for us to pray for. If you'd like more information about our church, we would be glad to get back in contact with you. We do actually read those. So please complete that and we want to know who you are. If you're watching us online via our Facebook stream, we'd love for you to leave us a comment or maybe even share our worship service on your page so that others may worship with you. And we are so glad that you have chosen to be with us this morning. While you're doing those things, there are a few announcements about things coming up in the life of our church that I want to mention. Um, first, our fall study uh, continues tomorrow at 11 a.m. or 5.30. We're only on week number four, and we'll be talking about some of the important moves that happened in the early Methodist church, such as open-air preaching and the formation of societies and classes and bands tomorrow. So we would love for you to join us for that. It's not too late if you have missed the first couple of sessions. We do want to say welcome to our church. Today is National Back to Church Sunday, and if you're our guest, we are so glad to have you. If you're our member, we're glad to have you as well as we gather for worship today. I do want to remind you that we have several meetings coming up this week. The Administrative Council meets um, September 19th at 6 o'clock in room 105. Last week, as an insert in your bulletin, you had a um, information sheet about a single board model which the council will be voting on. If you have questions uh, about that or would like to talk with Will or myself more about that, we will have a meeting at 5.30 before the Ad Council meeting specifically to address issues and, and concerns for that if you're interested in knowing more about that. Our pastoral care team meets Thursday at 9 a.m. and so um, we want to let folks know that we are praying for them and thinking about them and that team does a great job of reaching out to those who are in need. Next Sunday afternoon we will have our tailgate party from 5 to 7. It's for all ages. We'll have some games and we'll have food and we'll have fun for all. Remember to wear the colors or the shirt of your favorite team so that we know who you're pulling for. Go Tigers is what I always say. That's the right answer. <laughs> Bulldogs. I, I love tech and I went to the game last night. Unfortunately, the outcome was not as favorable as LSU's, but oh well. It was still fun. Um, so I hope that you will come for that next week and it'll be fun. It's an opportunity. Our, our idea here is to do something for all ages where we can kind of gather as a church community, have a chance to sit and visit and meet folks that maybe we don't on a Sunday morning. Maybe they sit on one end of the sanctuary and you sit on the other and you don't always see them. So we'd love for you to come and be a part of that. Also, one of our mission partners, Life Choices, has their banquet this coming Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. at the Davidson Athletic Complex. I believe they're also doing one on Friday at lunch if you are not free on Thursday evening. So um, if you'd like more information, you can see Deborah Lynch or myself. Um, it is a fundraiser, so they will be um, asking you to contribute to their work as well as educating you about their work. So, um, so be prepared for that. But we've been the last couple of years and the food is always good. So um, I don't, Deborah, do you know exactly how much the tickets are? $15. $15 for a ticket. So, so um, if you're free Thursday evening, then I'd encourage you to go and learn more and support one of our mission partners. So we have several things going on in the life of our church this week. Are there other announcements that we need to mention? Okay. All right, then let us begin with prayer. Oh Lord, we are so grateful to be in your house for the beautiful day that you have given us, for the wonderful weekend, for friends and family. Lord, we are so very blessed. But Lord, we know that all those blessings come from you, that ultimately you are the one who is giving us your grace, your mercy, and your love. And so as we gather for worship this morning, Lord, we pray that you would help us to put the worries and concerns of the week that has concluded behind us. Lord, help us to 
to set aside the anxieties and the worries of the week that is yet to come. And Lord, help us to turn our eyes upon Jesus. Lord, we invite your Holy Spirit into this worship service today. We pray that you would fill us with your power, that we might know your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, we ask that you would move in our hearts and lives, draw us closer to you and to one another. Lord, most of all, we are so grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. And it is all these things we pray in his name. Amen. And now I'd like to invite you to stand as we affirm our faith from 1 Timothy. I'll begin and then invite you to join with me as we remember all that God has done for us. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Now we invite you to be seated as our ushers come forward with our offering plates to receive our offering this morning. And while they are coming, let us join together in prayer. Oh Lord, when we think about our many blessings of the day that you have given us, of family and friends, of the opportunity to cheer for our favorite schools and to enjoy this world which you have given us, Lord, we are so very blessed and we are so very grateful. And so, Lord, now as we consider all of those blessings and we give you back a portion of what you've given us, we ask your blessing on these gifts that we give, that they might be used for your good and for your glory, that others might know the good news of Jesus Christ through them. And it's all these things we ask in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
please stand. Please remain standing as we join together in singing Crown Him with Many Crowns. seated and would the children come down for the children's sermon. see all the folks at church today as well as the boys and I brought something with me today you want to see what's in my bag you want to see okay it's dollar it's from dollar general no actually it's out of my garden so I'm not going to take it all the way out because it still has a little bit of dirt in it but this is what is that what is that what do you think that is
change the batteries. Okay. So, um, so this is out of my garden, and this is called a day lily. It's one of the things that I grow, and the adults are actually going to get to see some pictures of my day lilies um, in, a, in a little bit. But do you think that this day lily, do you think it looks really healthy? Is there a lot of green on it? Are you sure? No, there's not really a lot of green on it. But you know that this day lily is going to be just fine because look at all those roots. Do you see all those roots that are below it? So the roots are going to grow that day lily and eventually it's going to grow and flower because of all those roots. You see, whenever you go outside and you look at the big trees, like what's in our yard or the shrubs, they have roots under the ground that are just as big a lot of times as the top of the, of the plant. So the roots are really the important part, right? So, so if, I just had the, if I just had the green part, would, would, the, would the plant grow? It, no, it would need the roots to grow. It's kind of the same way with our faith, that we have to have roots in order to grow our faith, that doing things like coming to church and going to Sunday school and talking about Jesus and praying, all those things help us to grow deep roots in our faith. And we're going to be talking more about that in a little bit, in a few minutes. So the next time you see a plant, or maybe you plant something, I want you to remember that the roots are just as important as the plant, okay? All right, well, let's pray together. Lord, we're grateful for the day that you've given us. We're grateful for the beautiful world that you've given us. And Lord, we pray that just like our, the plants outside, that you would help us to have deep roots that we might grow in faith in you. And it's all these things we pray in Christ's name, amen. Thank you very much. Have a good day. As we come to a time of prayer in our service, I want to remind you of our prayer list that is on the back of your bulletin. I'd like to encourage you to take that home with you and continue to pray for those folks. I know that we may not know every single one of them, but, um, we, but God does. We may not know their needs, but God does, and so I'd encourage you to continue to pray for them throughout your week. You will, of course, see listed there our ministry partners and missionaries. We were so blessed to have Sammy Marimi with us last week. He had a very powerful message for us. I hope that you have had a chance to, to kind of think about that and to watch that again and to think about what God is calling us to do to step out of our boat to follow Jesus. And so we want to continue to pray for Sammy's work as well as the work of all of our Mission partners, I received a text this week from um, the, my friend who is the, the minister at the Wesley Foundation on Louisiana Tech's, Tech's campus to thank us for our gift to their work. And so, so through Faith Promise and through your mission heart, you have an opportunity to do God's work here in our community and around the world, and we're grateful for that. We do want to continue, we want to pray for um, William Barnett, who is... Um, uh, in hospice care. We also want to pray for Bob and Wanda Bryant. Wanda is improving a little bit, um, so we want to continue to pray for her, for Sue McFadden as she goes back to work this week and she continues to improve. Jean Lynch had a fall yesterday and seems to be okay, but we want to ask, continue to pray for her healing. Um, Don Shankles is slowly improving. We want to continue to pray for them as, as well as for Francis Stinson. Um, all those folks listed there. So if you have someone that you know of in your life or something going on with you that you'd like for us to pray for, um, just leave us a note or turn in. I know you've already turned in your, your slip, but we would be glad to put that on our list as well. So with those folks on our minds, are there others you know of who are in need of our prayers today? Family of Gip Kilpatrick. Others this morning. Okay, then let us join together in prayer.
Oh Lord, we are so grateful to gather in your house on this beautiful day that you have given us. We are so grateful for the reminders of you that are all around us. And so, Lord, as we consider today what it means to be rooted in faith and to to grow our faith and to strengthen our relationship with you, Lord, we pray that you would lead us and guide us. Lord, we are so grateful that we have the opportunity to gather together in your house the the freedoms and privileges that we enjoy in this country so often we take for granted. But, Lord, we are so grateful for the privilege that we have of gathering here together. Lord, we help us, uh, that we hope that you would help us to encourage one another and to gather together, Lord, to, to grow our roots and faith deeper in you. And so, Lord, as we hear your word today, we pray that we would become more connected to you and to one another, that we might grow and serve you even more. Lord, we are so grateful for the blessing and the opportunity of being a part of what you're doing here and around the world. We pray for our mission partners, for Life Choices as they have their banquet this week, for Sammy and Sharon International as they continue your work in Africa, for so many others that are in need, for the Wesley Foundation as the students go back to school. Lord, we pray that through those partnerships with them that that you would work and that they would come to know you through all of those things. Lord, we also remember so many that are in need this morning. We remember so many that are sick, and we ask your continued healing touch to be upon them. We ask that as your people that you would help us to do our part to encourage them and to help them and to remind them that they are not alone in this difficult time. Lord, we also remember so many who have lost a loved one to death, and we pray your comfort and your peace that passes understanding to be upon them. And Lord, as we gather in your house today, we may have other worries and concerns on our hearts and minds, maybe that we did not mention. Maybe it is about work or school or with friends or family. But Lord, whatever it is, what we know is that you love us, you care for us, and you hear us when we pray. And so it is all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. Thank you. We are fortunate to have many talented musicians and singers, and they add to our worship service. I hope you tell them how much you appreciate what they do for us. Well, I'd like to say welcome to church again. Today is National Back to Church Sunday, and Grace is participating in that effort. If you are our guest today, we want to welcome you and say thank you for being here. You see, churches all America are hosting guests today, and if you are our guest, you are in good company. I want you to know that you are welcome here as you are. You don't have to dress a certain way, act a certain way, or give up anything to be here. You see, when Jesus was on the earth, some of his closest followers had some less than impressive pasts. Some of the people that were followers of Jesus were prostitutes and tax collectors and simple fishermen. And yet Jesus offered hope to people of all races and backgrounds. He loved the sick, the lonely, and the marginalized. You matter to God and you matter to us. We hope that you will see our church as a refuge in the wilderness, an anchor in the storm, a place to belong, a place that provides hope, help, and encouragement for whatever you are going through. We'd love to invite you to, going, to join us again soon. Whether it is your first time or whether you have called this church home for many years, our prayer is that today you would meet God in a powerful way. Today I'm beginning a message series called Rooted. And over the next few weeks we're going to take a look at how digging into spiritual practice can help us develop deeper spiritual roots. Today we're going to look at how rooting our lives in faith and a faith community can transform us and help us live lives that honor God and bless others. Some of you might know that I enjoy gardening, at least if you paid attention during the children's time. And, and I have to tell you, I think that that is hereditary. One of my earliest memories is walking through my grandfather's garden in Lake Charles, picking the carrots up out of the soil, washing them off, and eating it with the tops of the carrots still on. My granddaddy, Elmer Blunt, also grew flowers and entered his roses in several competitions and even won some prizes because of their beauty. I grew roses for a while, but I did, found out that roses didn't like to move, and every so often I moved, and so I finally settled on perennials, especially daylilies and a few bearded irises. And when we moved to Ruston two years ago, I planted my daylilies in a spot I knew was marginal. And I'll show you a picture of some of the lilies that have, well, I'm going to try to, ah, that have grown in my garden. And, and, and I knew that the spot that I put them was, was not the best spot. And I got a few to bloom, but they didn't thrive, and they weren't doing as well as I'd hoped. They simply didn't get enough sun, nor did the gardener, that is me, pay enough attention to them as far as weeding and fertilization and care. So this summer I decided to move them to the sunniest part of the yard on the south side of the house. I know several of you saw me working because people would be, I'd be out in the yard working and folks on Jefferson would honk at me and drive by. Some of you even saw me, asked me what I was doing out in the yard. But this entailed a lot of work to move those flowers. It, made, it entailed removing the grass, tilling the soil, removing unwanted roots, adding soil enhancements like a little bit of manure, edging the beds, and finally moving the plants. And as you can tell, this process has taken several weeks in my off hours during the mornings and the evenings. All this for a flower that lasts a day. But in order for the plants to thrive, the conditions must be right. Plenty of sunlight, good soil, and enough water. The flower might be the prettiest part of the plant, but it is the roots that are the most important part. The roots are the part that are vital to the health of the plant. To withstand the storm, the roots must be healthy. 
to absorb the greatest amounts of nutrients from the soil to, to feed the plant, the roots must be strong. The largest trees often have an unseen root system that is as vast and widespread as the branches above. The Bible tells us that we need the same type of deep roots in God and His Word in order to flourish in our lives. That God wants us to pay close attention to the kind of roots that we are putting down, the kinds of things that we are spending our time on, because it is those roots that help us to stand strong in the face of difficulties and trials. It is the roots that help us to grow into mature and healthy people. The roots help us to have a firm foundation in a world of chaos. For our faith to thrive, we must provide the right conditions and we must have deep roots. That is why we are so glad that you have chosen to join us this morning and that's why it's so important for you to be here. So what does it mean for us to be rooted in faith? Well, the first thing I want you to see is that faith in Jesus grows deep roots. Faith in Jesus grows deep roots. So the Apostle Paul was one of the great men of the early church. That he was once uh, who, someone who persecuted the church, but he had this miraculous life-saving encounter, life-turning around encounter with Jesus, and all of a sudden he became one of the greatest advocates for Jesus that the world has ever known. That he traveled throughout the ancient world establishing churches wherever he went, and one of the places he established a church was at a place called Colossae. And so... He, once he established those churches, he would go on to the next place, but he would write letters back to those churches. And we still have many of those letters in our New Testament Bible today. So Paul was writing this letter back to his friends in the church at Colossae. We call it Colossians. And in the letter, he talks about that they were facing pressure to abandon their convictions, to that they were being persecuted because of their faith in Jesus. And so Paul writes to them to remind them to stand strong and to trust in the roots of their faith. And this is what he writes to them in chapter 2. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and build up, built up in him, Strengthen in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. You see, Paul is writing to these friends at his church in Colossae. He's writing to them, remember you trust in Jesus. Remember that you have follow Jesus. Don't give in to the way of the world. Instead, continue to live like Jesus. No longer live like the world. Instead, now live like Jesus. To follow the teachings of Jesus and allow him to reign in our day-to-day -day lives. How we live is no longer simply our decision. Instead, we are dependent on following Jesus wherever we go. And so we must be careful not to follow the ways of the world so that we follow Jesus in our hearts and lives. Faith in Jesus grows deep roots. The second thing I want you to see is that roots of faith grow in fellowship. Roots of faith grow in fellowship. You see, we can't live on our own or we can't make it on our own very well. The founder of the Methodist movement who we are studying on Monday nights was a fellow named John Wesley. And Wesley wrote to his new Methodist that there is no such thing as a solitary Christian. That on our own, eventually, we will fall and we will fail. Jana and I had an opportunity this spring. We went to four national parks in, in four days when we flew to Vegas and visited several parks out west. And in about a month, we are 
taking a, another trip, and we're going to see the ark in Kentucky, and we're going to stop a, a couple of national parks, Mammoth Cave and Great Smoky Mountains on our way back home from that trip to see the ark. But while we are there, we, one, of the, one of my greatest hopes and dreams is to see these trees. These are the coastal redwood trees, and they can grow up over 300 feet tall. They are the tallest living things in the world. The interesting thing about those coastal redwoods is that some of them are over 2,000 years old, meaning that some of them were alive when Jesus himself walked the earth. So, but the interesting thing about those Redwoods, as you would think that they would have deep roots, but they really don't. And they have no tap root. Instead, what they have is the, the deepest roots that those huge trees have go 6 to 12 feet in the ground. And over the years, think of all that they have subs subs uh, survived, that they have survived earthquakes and storms and all kinds of weather. How have they done it? It's simple. They intertwine their roots. So they live together, they root together, and they help one another stand together. You see, we are the same way, that we must also live together and intertwine our roots together so that we can follow Jesus. In Hebrews, this is what the Bible tells us. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds and not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. It is important for us to be here. It is important for you to be here so that we can encourage and help one another. The writer of Hebrews, and we don't know exactly who that author was, but he uses a very interesting word in this passage. He says that we must spur one another on to good deeds. So this word was used, this Greek word that, that the author uses, it was used for someone that would, would bother you, that would, um, would annoy you, that might, would even hurt, hit you and, and just make you to where you wouldn't want to ignore them, that you would react to them because you had to. And that is how the author of Hebrews says that we are to live, that we are to help one another. To When someone is not here, we should call them and say, hey, we missed you at church. We would like to see you. We should be willing to help others because of what Jesus has done for us. You see, Jesus said his followers would be the hope of the world. And what we want to do is that we want to make a difference in our world, in our community. Yes, our world is broken. Yes, sometimes the church falls short of what it should be. But we don't depend on the world. We don't depend on the church. Our faith is in Jesus. And so what I want to encourage you to remember is that the faith, in God. It grows when we are in fellowship with one another. We need one another. We need help for one another. And so the key is to staying connected to Jesus so that we might be rooted in fellowship. The last thing I want you to see this morning is that Jesus is the vine and that we are the branches. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And, and in John chapter 15, Jesus is growing close to his final week. That he is soon to be cruci tr tried, crucified, and arrested. And, but he had a few last words for his disciples, his followers. And, and he wanted them to know that remaining committed to the roots of their faith was the hope and the way that they can make a difference in the world. The same is true for us as the church. But Jesus, <coughs> excuse me, he had a, a great way of 
driving home his points, just like any good preacher. And I don't know if I qualify as one of those. But, but Jesus, he used a lot of illustrations that the people would know. And so in John chapter 15, this is what he says to his disciples. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And of course, what we know is that Jesus was talking about this kind of image. The idea of the grape and the grape vine. It was likely something that many of them were familiar with in a region that is still known today for its wine. When I went to Israel, you could see the grapes along the hillside on the side of the road. So Jesus says he is the vine and we are the branches. The vine provides all of the energy and the resources. The vine is the part that has the roots. It provides the nutrients for the branches and ultimately the branches form the fruit. Jesus' example applies to us today as well. He should be the vine of our life. We must be careful to stay connected to Jesus by spending intentional time with him, coming to church, prayer, studying the word, surrounding ourselves with people who encourage us to think about spiritual things and allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. That is why the church is so vital to our daily and regular lives. It is in community and fellowship that we maintain a close relationship with God. So those beautiful grapes that we see on the vine, could they, would they be there without the, without the vine? Would they be there without the roots? All of it works together to produce the fruit. A healthy vineyard is full of vines with healthy branches and lots of grapes. So the vine of Christ provides us, we are the branches, with all that we need to produce the good fruit for Jesus. In his book, Becoming a Disciple, this is how Daniel Borquet describes it. He gives us this story. The strong bond that unites the vine and the branches has to do with the sap that flows through them. Now, Jesus does not use the word sap, but nonetheless gives a lengthy excursus on love in a way suggestive of the sap in a vine. This is because he speaks of the love flowing in just one direction, from Christ out toward his disciples, not in the reverse direction, just as sap flows from the vine into the branches and nutrients and, and not the other way around. The whole picture is centered on the love that flows and gives life like the sap in a plant. This way of speaking about love invites the disciple to understand that we receive before we give. We receive before we give. That we are not the origin of love and that we are loved before we love. It is an invitation to learn something the disciple often has trouble putting into practice to allow ourselves first to be loved by Christ before attempting to ourselves love. Allowing oneself to be loved by Christ, to be loved by God through Christ, is opening ourselves to that love just as the branch opens to the sap it receives from the vine, which gives it life. How easy and natural this is for the branch, how difficult it can be for us. We have so much trouble accepting being loved by Christ, welcoming this love that Christ lavishes upon us and which gives us life. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. And so when we open ourselves to the love and grace of God through our trust in him, it empowers us to serve with compassion, with Grace, love, joy, mercy, and kindness. 
And it is those deep roots of faith that are our constant companion about how we should live. It is our source of love that we cannot do it on our own. We cannot live life on our own. We cannot produce spiritual fruit that is a blessing to the world on our own. We will have everything necessary when we are connected to the source and the love of life. So it is my prayer that our deep roots would continue to grow, that we can have uh, make a difference for Jesus in this community and around the world. And so the challenge for you and I, for us to consider is, what do we need to do to grow a deep-rooted faith that sustains us for today, for tomorrow, and for whatever the future might bring? Let us pray. Oh Lord, we are so grateful for sending us the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ. We are so grateful that we have the opportunity to get to know him, to allow him to be our Lord and Savior, to root our lives in him. Lord, we pray that you would help us to put our trust in Jesus and to allow him to grow those deep roots in us so that we can make a difference. Lord, we also pray that you would help us to provide support for others and for others to come alongside us and to support us and help us. Lord, we are not intended to make it through this life alone. And so help us to encourage one another and to spur one another on to good deeds, as Hebrews reminds us. Lord, we know that you are the vine, we are the branches. May we stay connected to you at all times, and might we bear the fruit that you have called us to bear so that others can see Jesus in us. Lord, we are so grateful for all that you've done for us, especially the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, that through his life, death, and resurrection, we can have life in this world and in the world that is to come. And it is all these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we come to a time of response in our service, the altar is open if you would like to come and pray. I'll be glad to pray with you if you'd like for me to do so. I'd also be glad to talk with you more if you'd like to know more about accepting Christ as your Lord and Savior, to become a follower of Jesus and allow him to grow those roots in you or to become a member of our church here at Grace as we seek to make a difference in our community and around the world. Our closing hymn is, I Need Thee Every Hour. Would you please stand as we sing together?
this is usually the part of the service where I say thank you for coming and remind you that God loves you and that God goes with you into your week and all those things remain to be true. But I also am going to invite you to continue to consider what it means to be rooted in faith as you go home. So on, on your bulletin at the, um, after the postlude, I've put some questions there that I've entitled Next Steps. So I'd encourage you to, to maybe have this conversation with whoever you're eating dinner with or maybe on the way home and talk about some of the things that we have talked about in church today. What are practical ways to develop and sustain spiritual roots in our life? Why do you think Jesus called himself the vine and why does he call us branches? Why has the church been such a force for good in the world for so long? How can the church be a place to abide in Christ? And what kind of fruit would you like to see your life produce? And what can you do to foster that result? <clears throat> now this is not a test, or at least not a test that I'm giving, but what I'd like for you to consider is, well, what does all of this mean to you? What is God calling me to do with this? And I'm hoping that some of those questions might be something that would lead for you to take the next steps in faith. And so with all those things, I want to remind you, thank you for coming. God loves you. Hope that you have a great week and let us pray together. Oh, Lord, we are so grateful that you are with us. And no matter what we're facing, and Lord, we are so grateful that we have the opportunity to have deep roots in faith through Jesus Christ. Lord, we're grateful for these folks who came to church this morning, who worshiped you and wants to, to put their roots deeper in you. We ask that you would bless them and draw them closer to you and to one another. And so, Lord, as we go into a week that is sure to be full of challenges and trials, Lord, we are so grateful that you go with us. We pray that you would help us to plant our roots in you so that we can make it through the storms of life. Lord, we're grateful for your son, Jesus Christ, and all that he's done for us through his life, death, and resurrection. And so, Lord, as we go from this place, we pray that you would go with us and that others would see Jesus in us through what we do and say. And it's these things we pray in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior.